Healthy Scratch, I'm Danielle Michaud, and listen, I get it. If you aren't a card-carrying member of Leafs Nation, you could give rat's ass what's going on in Toronto. But Babcock getting the boots big news regardless of which team you cheer for, except that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Pierre Engvall for a couple of reasons. First, friend of the show and PA voice of the Marlies, Simon Bennett, reminded us via Twitter that on Sunday, Pierre was named first star of the game thanks to this. Engvall. Across the line, Engvall comes to White, takes a shot, he scores! Pierre Engvall! Engvall gets called up on Tuesday, and two days after that, does this in Arizona. Pierre Engvall, short-handed, Engvall, and all he scores! Not since 1965 has a Leaf scored his first in the show short-handed. You may have also noticed Sheldon Keefe, head coach in both instances. Things can change quickly. But even better was the celebration. Engvall said after he was so happy, he tried to do something special. It's definitely special, memorable in fact, and who knows, maybe it's catching on. We're dedicating this edition of Mish Plays to the fans. Like good guy Vlad Kamenev giving a puck to the little guy, throws it up, misses, not enough juice, takes a whack, and falls on his face. What a glorious sequence of events. At least he can laugh about it. And a push-up punishment since he couldn't get the job done. Because the fans are always involved, like this sweet pea who took the restaurant's receipt and wrote Bruins on it. This girl, not totally filled in yet about how hockey works, but that's okay, we're working on it. This guy knows what's up, he thinks. We're actually down, no idea what's going on here. And uh, my producer Steph giving me the flip, thank you very much, it's our 10th birthday, okay. Yeah, kids, so impressionable, right? These two watching the stands, the Sabres game, and Mini Jack starts to get in on the action himself. Figures he'll use some fists of fury like his buddy on the ice. That's exactly what mom and dad want to see, right? Very illustrious guest joining Healthy Scratch for the first time, because Justin, you're not busy enough. No, no, right? this has been a very low-key week, not much going on. Uber sailing yeah. through, <laughs> no big deal, especially when it comes to Leafs land. Love them or hate them, there's been lots of chaos the last couple months, is that a good way to put it? Yeah, I yeah. think that's perfect. So, I asked you to compile five ways you think that Toronto can salvage this season and turn it around for the better. And the very first one you said, which is an obvious one to people who are watching, special teams. Yeah, well, they, you know, they're a weird team because they have so much elite talent so that you think their power play should be, you know, world beating, but they're in the bottom half of the league in terms of power play goals. Um, their penalty kill is uh, the opposite of good. I would go ahead and say uh, that would be terrible, actually. <laughs> okay. And they don't, you know, that's not an easy fix. I'm not sure that they have the personnel yeah. to even fix that problem specifically, but you just, you can't be a great team in this league when your special teams suck. Yeah. Um, so definitely at the top of my, that's why we're talking about it first, uh, they need to unsuck their, their special teams. Unsuck the special teams like that, working on that, it's a good start. Uh, they also need to protect the house. And when you say that, I'm thinking you mean the types of shots that they're facing, yeah. try to eliminate those? Yeah, the Leafs have been scored on more than any other team in the NHL this year. So it speaks to the fact they don't defend well. So if you can get William Nylander to block more than say two shots in 23 games, which is exactly how many he's blocked, <laughs> that would be yeah. ideal. So uh, that's something they need to prioritize in their own end, just taking care of that area of the ice. Now, William Nylander, considered one of the elite guys, should be at least for the money that they have given him, yeah, along yeah. with Matthews, Marner, JT. And those guys can't just be good. No. No, and that's that's been a big miss for me this year. As you look at uh, Austin Matthews' stats, and he's uh, above a point per game, and people say that's really good. Well, he makes eleven million dollars, and he was a first overall draft pick, and that is kind of baseline expectation performance. He needs to be more like Leon Draisaitl and Connor McDavid class. You know, maybe not quite that good, but he needs to be more than a point per game guy. Mitch Marner had eighteen points in eighteen games when he was hurt. That's good. Yeah. But it's not what you need from the guys you're giving eleven million bucks to. So it's just a matter of uh, if they they don't defend well, so you need to be so good at the other end that those guys can't afford to be just good. When we're talking about scrutiny throughout the lineup, that's like the obvious place. Like, none of this works if you guys don't. So. Which perfectly segues us to Justin's fourth thing, which is 
a backup. Yeah. They do have one, but not the guy you want behind Freddy. Yeah, yeah, no, they have a guy who does it. Uh, they definitely, <laughs> the, there is a, you know, I would say league-wide, he's not even average. And he, you know what's terrible at doing this? Like, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. You know, I worked with him at the Toronto Marlies. He's an excellent guy, and he's worked really hard, and he's played in all sorts of leagues and done everything asked of him. I just don't think he's he's a suitable backup for this team. They're going to ask their backup to play 20 games this year, uh, you know, roughly around there anyway, and, and they just can't afford to lose them all. They need to plug that hole. Tristan Jari in, in Pittsburgh yeah. uh, is, is probably a, a target for them, but unfortunately you just need someone who doesn't make a lot of money, again, because of that salary cap issue. So we don't want to look too much into their 3-1 win with Sheldon Keefe as the new bench boss, but it's hard not to notice the one thing that I saw throughout the game they were having fun. Yeah. And that's key, you think, to them making this turnaround. It is. And people think it's such a corny thing that, like, uh, you know, it's not fun. It's a business. It's professional hockey. But the, their best players are kids. And if they're not having a good time and they're not loose, they're going to be less creative. They're, you know, you kind of need to exist in that flow state out there in the ice. Everything is changing so rapidly and you need to be in a good headspace. And, and we saw some smiles last game, which had been rare this season. And, uh, you know, it, it's a weird thing to say. I hope they just have a good time, but I think it's an <laughs> integral part of them winning is them yeah. getting back to having fun so they can be who, who they really are. And they'll buy in to this new product. Well, yeah, and that's Sheldon is, I, I think, well suited to facilitate that. Perfect. Uh, you only have that one game, but I'd like you to grade what you saw in comparison to what you've seen. Yeah. How would you grade their, their first game with a new bench boss? It's an A+. Plus. There's, not, there's not one thing where you would say, boy, yeah, but they need to do this. That was how it looks when everything goes well. Uh, they were organized and they were creative. They kept the puck out of their own net. Um, I, I thought that's, if it goes well for this team, that's a glimpse of what it should look like. They're too good to be this bad. Is that fair to say, Justin? That's a fact, okay. absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Huge stick tap and maybe a hug to Keith Yandel. In their game against Carolina, he's clipped by a dump in and lost nine teeth. Nine! Even by hockey standards, it's a lot of chiclets. He missed the second period, returned for the third, then had dental surgery the next morning to be in the lineup Sunday night to keep his NHL Ironman streak alive. Okay. Now, speaking of streaks, stick tap to the Islanders, who are so freaking good, they can go 0-6 in the power play, have an entirely underwhelming performance against the Sharks, and still keep that franchise best point streak rolling up to 17 games going into Monday's action. Finally, stick tap to WWE's Renee Young, who gave hockey play-by-play -play a go Saturday in Vegas from the booth. Check it out. Welcome to Hockey Listen, Night in Canada. I'm very happy to be here, but you had to show the video of me getting kicked in the face. That was something. All right, let's let's try your your play-by-play -play chops here for a minute or so. Go ahead. Oh gosh, here we go. All right, got the defense making their way up here, Just trying to get break into the uh, offensive zone. Here comes the oh, deflected. All right. Before I let you go, one other thing I wanted to mention. Nice to see TJ Brody back on the ice. Such a scary situation in Calgary. So happy to see him in practice again with his teammates. Other than that, you know the drill. We need you to like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this edition of Healthy Scratch. And we'll always see you next week. Peace.